G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is an anti-armor gorse rifle with bullets exploding for area damage and faster movement speed whilst aiming major and minor legendary effects respectively. It's been quite a while since I've actually used a gorse rifle in Fallout 76, so I'm happy to get back into the swing of things with a nice legacy version, and it is legacy because it's an energy weapon and it fires explosive bullets. Now this thing, whilst it does do the ballistic damage, it is still an energy weapon because instead of using the standard gunpowder explosion to propel the bullet through the barrel and at your targets, it is going to be using magnetic induction instead. It'll magnetically supercharge this thing and pull it between these magnets faster so you can ever get a bullet. So, you know, that's how it works. And some people get a little bit confused on that, I guess, because how could it be an energy weapon if it's doing ballistic damage? It's just throwing a metal slug propelled by magnets, all right? That's how easy it is. Anyways, so since this thing does do ballistic damage, we can actually chuck on the demo expert perk and it'll actually do damage, it'll actually be listed there. So, we went from 168 or something to 185, which is, you know, not too bad, but, you know, it little, every little bit of damage helps on a gorse rifle. We want these things to be hitting as hard as possible, so that's nice. Um, faster movement speed whilst aiming, I guess, will kind of synergize well if we want to move around whilst aiming down the scope. We've got a medium scope on this. Anything more than that is a little bit ridiculous, but if we want to use this thing in close quarters, we've got a true barrel and a true stock to tighten up the hit fire spread to be very, very good indeed. And what I might do is actually pull off um, Concentrated Fire, replace that with Ground Pounder, because that'll increase my hip fire accuracy even more. And um, since when you start charging this thing, it'll have the percentages when you start charging it. So if you're, you know, say, targeting a super mutant that's above you at 11%, you charge up the barrel running close and you're at 95% when you release a trigger, it'll still have that 11% um, thing attached to it. So, chucking on Ground Pounder and getting rid of, uh, Concentrated Fire seems like a sensible idea. So, we'll always be going for the Torso anyway, which gives us a greater amount. We just can't zero in on the head in Vats, which could be a problem, but what we'll do is we'll chuck on some other perks to increase its damage, at least directly increase its damage, the ones you can actually see the numbers for, not just, like, the theory numbers. Obviously, gonna chuck on some Rifleman perks there. No Starch Gene stays on, and we've got our Bloody Mess 2 in luck, because it's just a nice thing to have an extra 15% damage. I've, I've got Demo Expert on already. Now we're doing Tree 40 damage. That's not too bad. Okay, so here we are at the Toilet Paper Storage Facility, and here's what the Gorse Rifle looks like in third person. Yep, Winter's blonde, and she's also wearing red lipstick. She looks kind of silly, doesn't she? But there's a little bit of red light on her face too. That That's not the lipstick, that's because of the little numbers on the side there, on, on the back, so you can see how much this thing is charged. Let's just get right into it. Look at that hip fire accuracy. For some reason, um, non-automatic weapons get the benefits out of um, Ground Pounder, so what you can do is, you know, Increase it with the... Ooh, he survived that. I'm impressed. And again? Yeah, oh, he must have been, like, half aggroed or something. Not really sure. We'll just quickly give him the old one tap, and that'll drop him. And that doggo, we just tap the trigger. Don't have it to even have it... I only think you're doing about half the damage when you charge it. It's not like a 100 to 0% thing, depending on how much you charge it. You'd just be doing... Um, half damage, and that just that drop is so disgusting that I won't bother looking at it. Now I've got chameleon armor on again, which I neglected to show off again, but um, it's got a bunch of AP regen on it as well. I could probably chuck on something like dodgy to get a little bit of extra um, resistance to this incoming damage, but I don't think I'll be doing that. Now there's that turret that usually sits there. I wonder if I can bounce explosive damage off this railing. No, I'm going to have to go around and actually see him. Or I could just leave it. I could probably just do that, but nah. Give her a full charge because we're not sneaking. That seems to be quite enough to take it. Now, when you're using these things, I've got a perforating magazine, which is good for damage output. People think that they're useless because Angry Turtle said, nah, man, they're bad. If you're going for flat-out damage output, there's no reason not to chuck on any armor-piercing magazines. Although it might be slightly... Um, you know, negligible in terms of your total damage output. Um, people think reloading the thing faster is slightly advantageous or slightly better than a bit of extra damage, but yeah, I see the point in that, but I'm thinking that oh, I, I like to get as much damage as I possibly can out of these things because there's no kill like overkill. Also, I've got um, uh, what's it called? Speed Demon. That, that speeds up my reloads enough for me to think, yeah, I can probably let the reload speed go. There we go. Nice. I feel like of the energy weapons, the Gorse Rifles make the most sense being explosive because, again, it's firing that 
physical projectile rather than the beam of energy or stuff, the, the goo that the plasma gun shoots. So he ran right past me. What an idiot. Ha! Ah. Anyways, I could probably go around in third person. I could, but I'll be cloaked most of the time, so I won't. But yeah, Winter, she's still trying to get a tan, and she got the new um, Keg Grognak outfit. She thought that that would give her a tan, but I don't think it's going to work this time. I almost died there. That's okay. That's more adrenal reaction for me. That is one cheap ass super moon. It looks like we can tap the trigger and kill these guys very easily, which is good for TTK. Because I'm considering um, the charging up of the barrels to be in the TTK, even though that's probably not how most would see it. But if you're having to charge up the barrel each kill, that's going to slow down your time to kill in a massive group, you see. So being able to... Nice. Uh, aim and uh, fire at things and then just shoot them and kill them instantly rather than waiting for the barrels and everything to charge up. I feel like that's a cool thing. Now, more on the explosive gorse rifle thing. I feel like having this in the game doesn't necessarily break it all that much. The gorse rifle obviously does really well with the explosive damage because it's got a high base damage for that to multiply off in the first place. But what happens here is that you've got a weapon that is actually going to be dropping as explosive, which means it's going to be kind of half unique because look at this, it's an energy weapon and it can drop with explosives. Because, you know, an energy firing weapon was ballistic damage. I mean, the plasma gun already does that because it, it technically is firing a physical beam of plasma thing. Just some goop in the air that, that's very hot and it hits you hard and, I mean, not as hard as a bullet because you can tell the velocity is... Ma massively lower than what you'd get. Oh, I'm not sneaking anymore. There we go. That's how it should be. See, 107. If you're getting over 100 with explosive damage, you're actually doing pretty good. Obviously, that's not going to be killing these guys, one-shotting them anytime soon. But it's good enough. I do think I've got serendipity on. I kind of left that in as like a... I'm not very good at this game. Back in again, and uh, we're not full adrenaline anymore, so if I see a super mutant warlord, I'm going to charge up this barrel and do some damage, but yeah, that's why I lack running around bloodied in nerd rage. You've got all the unyielding stuff. It's, it's just good. And then if I, in the off chance that I do have a little bit of a mess up like I did just before, I've got a 45% chance for that explosive damage to do nothing to me, which is good. Or I could just chuck on fireproof. That's helpful. I don't know who was who was saying got you to because I was totally in caution. Maybe he picked his nose and finally got that super mutant booger that was in there. Winter looks so weird with blonde hair. I'm not sure I like this. See, look at that. That just looks so weird. I'm not in the sun or I'm not in the sunlight or the daylight, but I'm gonna move over to these lights. There's a little bit of clipping going on. I was thinking that if you put the headband on with the elegant hairstyle, that's what it's called, um, if you want to chuck it on your own character, I was thinking that I should really not pick that up because that is going to put me straight over capacity. Never mind, we're just doing this with me over capacity. We'll see how we go, right? And uh, not very well. I'm going to get my ass handed to me because the gorse rifle, it kind of falls flat in its face when it comes to crowd control. It falls flatter on its face than Borderlands 3 story, and that's a yikes fest right there. So what I'll do instead is I'll lure them all to the dance floor and see if I can't nail them all together with explosive damage. Uh, so uh, I'll just keep on bouncing around like we're on some sort of crazy ghoul trampoline. Now you got to bounce around with me, ghouls. Where's my immersion? Because... I'll get fucked. You did not hit me from there. This is, that's the most annoying thing. You get, you get these moments where the tools will hit you. Hang on. Okay, it appears that the uh, explosive damage isn't calculated off how charged your barrel is. And you know what? There is no reason why I shouldn't be aiming for these shots. Except for the, that I can't fucking aim, apparently. Mm, okay, I'm not enjoying this. Die, you cretins. Mm -hmm. As predicted, this thing did fall on its face. Probably should start sneaking now. Start actually thinking about where I'm putting my shots. 
Unfortunately, this thing is too slow. Um, my explosive damage will probably kill me half of the time. You can't actually increase your explosive radius to a point where it's super effective in groups like this. You can get the easy picks here and there, but it's not going to be game-changingly great. If you ever take this onto a White Springs run, don't expect it to be you know, taking down hordes of them with ease like a bloodied fire rate handmade will, or a fixer, if you will, you know. It's just, just kind of lame like that, so we got to jump around like a bloody kangaroo. Ugh, fuck. Okay, back to what this thing's actually good at. I'm going to snipe one. I'm going to take his head off from all the way over here, you'll see. Told ya. Do you know how good it'd be if Bethesda's gunslinger perk design allowed you to carry, like, a pistol as a secondary weapon? So it wouldn't have to take up so many goddamn points in your agility, actually, to get them to do good damage. I think that'd be so awesome, having, like, this backup 10mm auto pistol for when you get into those ghoul crowd control situations where this thing would be overkill and too slow to actually kill them and do anything effective. Now that... Now that would be fun, but no, Bethesda decided, no, you, you're using pistols, your agility stat is now mine. We're claiming all of this, and you can't get it back, sorry. Okay, you might say, well, I'm just going to put less gunslinger perks on. Well, enjoy your inferior damage to everything else, idiot. You can't win with a gunslinger. You don't know queen killer, that's for sure. I mean, a Mylurk queen killer, that sure, yeah, you can get away with doing that, but... You'll be struggling against a Scorch Beast Queen, and, you know, you need to be doing good damage to that thing to actually succeed in Fallout 76. That's your benchmark. That's your end target. And if you can't get to it, well then, what the hell are you doing? You're wasting your time. Anyways, rant over. Let's uh, go and shoot stuff somewhere else. Oh, it's Mole Rats. Well, this should be a piece of piss then. I'm going to take great pleasure as, as I slaughter every single one of these annoying little assholes. It's rant time again. You're not getting one rant, you're getting two rants. Okay, Bethesda, listen up. These are quite possibly the most horribly designed, annoying enemy in the game. Not only do they just burrow in and just teleport wherever the fuck they want, Rad Scorpions do it too, but these guys are more annoying because they make that horrific, satanic bow movement noise whenever they pop out of the ground. And now I have to jump around like a kangaroo again. Winter's legs are going to be looking like, I don't know... Arnold Schwarzenegger's at the end of this because she's jumping like you wouldn't believe. Eat this. Eat hot lead, you little rat bastards. God, I hate these things. They're just so bad. And the fact that these things can detect you no matter where you are is just... Um, it's, it's not immersive, man. It's game-breaking, especially when you're in a queen fight and these things show up. You get killed by Barbara instantly because they're all scorched like she is. They're all under her own mind control. No, this is bad. And for some reason, sometimes I like to fuck off to the middle of Timbuktu over here somewhere, and now they teleport back and forth and you can't kill them anymore. Bethesda, could you please remove this burrowing thing? It was a cool gimmick in Fallout 4 and it actually worked, but in Fallout 76, like most of the other things, is broken. Bad bad. See, look at this shit. I can't even kill that son of a bitch. Okay, back to the gorse rifle. I quite like the gorse rifle. It's a nice, decent, um, hard-hitting energy weapon that you could use. I mean, if you're doing, like, an energy weapons build, and, well, why would you? I mean, at least you can suppress this run, right? You can actually do quite well with it as compared to the other energy weapons in this game. It's not going to, you know, win the DPS war, but the damage per shot is up there, and it can do a pretty good job, even at these very extreme ranges where, you know, normally you would not be doing anywhere near that amount of damage with anything. But, yeah, most of this damage is still from the uh, weapon itself, and not from the explosives. The explosive is just kind of a tacked-on benefit thing. I still think that explosive gorse rifles are the gorse rifles to have, because you can't make much use out of fire rate to boost the thing's DPS, because... Well, if you're firing it too quickly, you're going to get the damage penalty of not having it fully charged anyway, so what's the bloody point? Hitmans you could probably get away with if you don't have a gorse rifle of the explosive variety. That might actually be really good for sniping as well, so 
it's not a terrible weapon, but it just kind of pales in comparison. And the fact that you can't just, you know, blitz everything in VATS really quickly, um, like you could in Fallout 4, because this thing was an absolute monster in Fallout 4. It was fully charged all the time, and as compared to real time, you could actually kill things so fast, so, so fast, if you, if you got, a, like, a gun through chain in VATS, which was pretty easy to do. If you had an instigating gorse rifle, basically Fallout 4 was already... It, it's... It, the game completes itself at that point. Luckily, we've got this one landing, but the hipfire accuracy has been quite good throughout this. I really want to like the gorse rifle in this game, but... It's got, a, it's got quite a lot of distractions, but you can make it work if you really want to, which I guess is nice. What I might do here is do some little bit of gun through, because why not, eh? I don't have devastatingly good perception. I don't think I've peaked the damage there. 5 to 171. This thing's about fucked, actually. Yeah, they they break down pretty quickly because I don't have a massive health bar on this. Could probably chuck the forceful stock to increase that a little bit. Or okay, Mr. Omnipotent. Good shot. I'll give you that one. But unfortunately for you, only your punching damage actually does anything. So that's fine. Yeah, it probably, yeah, if you compare this to, like, a laser sniper, it's going to completely trash the laser sniper and piss on its grave, so, you know, it's actually, I don't mind it, it's just kind of, it's just kind of in a spot where it's really fun to use, but it's not really effective enough to be a really good competitor in this game, and I guess it's mostly the fixer's fault, because that weapon is so goddamn badass, but... I think it's just the way Vats has shifted the game to be super quick. It kind of uh, leaves all of the slower weapons in the dust, such as the hunting rifle and the gorse rifle, which have suffered greatly in the new Vats implementation. But that's okay, because we love them anyway. Asterix, kind of. The hunting rifle annoys me sometimes. A bloodied fire rate one with the, uh, the hair trigger receiver is actually kind of fun. Too bad you can't push the damage further out than what you could probably get with a regular hunting rifle. But the... Uh, the extra fire rate helps. It's probably one of the best hunting rifles I've ever used. But that's a weapon for another day. I've already done that one ages ago. So there you have it. There's Winter in a King Grognak costume. I don't think it suits her, to be honest. But the Gorse rifle was fun to use. Um, I could probably recommend this. It might be as rare as Hensi today because people, you know, they're using bloody explosive Gatling plasmas and they're thinking, yeah, I'm so good with this, man. I don't even have to aim. And what, what, a ghost rifle that requires aiming, bro? Nah, I don't want that. Thank you for watching, guys.